as I've said many times before, it's always best to capture packets when you don't have a problem. A lot of people try to capture packets when they have a problem. Well, you know what? It's tough to do. It's very tough to do. So in this example, I've got a webcam on my network here, this Linksys webcam, and I did a firmware upgrade on it the other day, and you know what? It took a while. So I wanted to find out why did it take so long? Was it a retransmission issue? Was it a Wi-Fi issue? Why? So what I've done here is I went through the process of doing the firmware upgrade and I captured all the packets. So now I'd like to show you how I go through uh, packets with Wireshark to try to figure out what's going on. So in this case, you just see a bunch of stuff. Well, geez, a lot of packets here. I've got 6,478 of them. What do I do? Well, a lot of people say I go to analyze. They go, whoops, I go straight down or they go down to expert info composite and then from there just went off the screen there it goes and people start here and they say well what is this is this part of the problem is this part of the problem is this part of the problem and I always explain to people that if you don't understand what these expert info messages mean then you're really gonna be at a standstill and you're gonna chase typically a red herring down some road and you're not gonna be able to figure out what the heck's going on in this case the warnings tells me that I have a zero window and a window full and, and what that's telling me is that TCP the protocol TCP was uh, unable to process everything within its buffer and sent back a message to the client saying hey my window is full or I have a zero window don't send any more data so why not start here this to me means performance and obviously I'm trying to troubleshoot a performance related issue so I'm going to hit this little plus sign here and now it tells me all the packets where that problem is. I'm going to pick any one. It doesn't matter which one you pick. In this case, 6328, I'm going to close it off. And you can see you're right in the middle of all of this stuff. Now, just a few things before we move on. I always like to have my screen set up a certain way, this way. And I'd like to show you uh, the way it is when people typically use Wireshark by default. By default, they've got colors, by default. And by default, they've got this packet details and they've got these packet bytes, whoops, packet bytes on the screen as well. So this is what it usually looks like. And you know what? I can't work this way. My brain does not process stuff three different ways simultaneously. So the first thing I'd like to do, and I tell everybody when I when I do my classes, is we gotta clean this up. So let's fix up these panes first. So if I was to go to view and packet details, I'm not going to click on it with my mouse. I'm going to hit the space bar. I'm sure you'll hear it in the background. And as I click the space bar, the check mark comes off. See? So that way I can select multiple things and see the effect uh, without having to, for example, click and then the menu goes away, which is quite annoying. So space bar. That's a great way to work in menus, okay? So now that I've got one pane, and I always tell people one pane at one time, so you have less pain. And in this case, the panes are all gone, and I've got my packet list pane left, which is usually where you want to start. Second thing are the colors. People love colors. I know a lot of people who love colors, and good for them. Um, but unfortunately, the colors get distracting. So I ask people many times as we work through the things, if you don't have a need or if you don't have a colored rule that you're using at that time, then just turn the colors off. And trust me, you get less migraines that way. So we're going to come over here and we're going to hit this little rainbow button here. Click. And now you've got a simple display. So there you go. So now we have one pane and we have no colors. The last thing we'd like to do is this is a performance issue. So we'd like to have a reference of latency. And my reference is typically a delta time. So that's what this column is here. So when you have the time column, the way you make sure it's the delta time is we go to view, we go down to time display format, and we want to make sure it's seconds since previously displayed packet. And in my case, I'd like to have milliseconds up. And again, you can hit the space bar, by the way, and see what the numbers look like. Okay? So seconds since previously displayed packet is what I like to have, and milliseconds for my granularity. All right? So there you go. So now I know, for example, see this one? This packet came 14 milliseconds after that one. This one came 13 milliseconds after that one. Right? So now that I'm all done, my screen is formatted the way I want, I can move on and try to troubleshoot. So why is this slow? Well, 
it actually gets to be quite simple once you can narrow down the traffic. So in this case, we've got this conversation going on. What you should probably do is set up a filter. So the easiest way to set up a TCP conversational filter is to right click. So if I right click, conversation filter, I don't want to do the IP because these two IPs may have had several TCP conversations or UDP conversations or pings or whatever going on. I specifically want this TCP conversation. So what that's going to do for me now is if you look at the top here, I've got a filter with this IP and this IP as well as TCP port number 49627 and 80. So I've got a filter based on two criteria, two IPs and two port numbers. People also call these endpoint filters. All right. So there we go. We've got it all up on the screen. I'm going to press the home key, go to the top. And now I can see it from beginning, beginning of the conversation, the SIN packet. I can see the data transfer, data, data, ACK, data, data, ACK, your, your typical TCP pattern. Okay. And I can see what's going on. Well, the nice thing about this is as I get my acknowledgments, I can see what the window size looks like for the receiver. So the receiver is saying, hey, I got your stuff, give me another 11,000. Hey, I got your stuff, give me another 14,000, 17,000, 20,000. And you can see it, it's ramping up, okay? And data's flying around quite nicely. If we look at the latency side of things, we see one millisecond, four, three, one. So it's pretty quick, things are great. So let me just page down. And all of a sudden we see, bang, 48, 61, things have started slowing down. I also call this dynamic baselining when I take existing values of something I've never baselined before and apply newer values to that same trace. Okay? So we know this was good and this not so good. And what's not so good about it? Well, number one, you see the latency shoot up. And number two, at the beginning we had data, data, act, data, data, act. Well, now we've got this kind of data, act, data, act, data, act. This, this pattern has changed. Okay? It doesn't matter if it's good or bad, it's just changed. And we can see here window full, window update, window full, full, full. So the client, okay, the client is saying, hey, you know what? Don't send any more data. That's what he's telling you, okay? And you can figure out who is complaining. Is it the webcam or is it the client? And it's pretty easy to find out. All you have to do is find a window full packet, okay? We're going to open up that pane, that packet detail pane, take a peek. The TCP layer and you can actually see the window size okay and the window size says it's 64k see that now if I look at this next packet this window update packet and I come down to here it says window size value 2920 see that so you get an idea of the window size is as these windows get full all right so let's see if we can finish off this conversation so as we go through the trace, we can see again, full update, full update, full update, full update. And all of a sudden you're going to notice something a little different. And this one actually says TCP zero window. So again, if you take a quick peek in here, the details, and we look down to the window size, it's zero. So what we finally figured out is things weren't going so well. Finally, somebody says that's enough. No more data. That's enough. Don't send me any more data. I don't care what you think. And sure enough, now we have the source because he's the guy who said so. This is the IP address of the webcam. So the webcam's receiving the data. It's having all sorts of issues along the way, telling the guy to slow down, slow down, slow down, and finally says zero window. So this isn't a client issue. It's not a browser issue. This is a webcam issue and the inability for that webcam to accept all that data. So again, if you just keep looking, you'll see this this pattern right that we talked about earlier this full this update you can see the higher latency numbers and it just doesn't look right if we keep going down the trace down the trace down the trace you can just manually just keep scrolling around or paging around and you'll see that it's pretty well like this through the whole entire trace see this I'm just I'm quickly flying through this thing it doesn't get any better does it and if you did want a good point of reference on how things looked when it did work just press the home key Go to the beginning of our filter trace file and you'll notice the beginning was fine. See, the beginning was just fine. And then all of a sudden, so there you go. That's how we poke around a trace file using Wireshark. And in this case, investigating TCP windowing issues along with a TCP zero problem.
So hope you enjoyed that. Bye for now.